But when we talk about deliverance, we have to know every sin, every behavior that we are into is rooted in certain sins. And that is why when Jesus was delivering a person called Mary Magdalene, we read this is in the Gospel of Mark chapter 16, verse 9, we read how the Lord is delivering Martha. This is Gospel of Mark. Let's read chapter 16, verse 9. Now, after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Now, Mary Magdalene became an apostle of apostles, a servant of God, because Jesus delivered her from seven demons. And which are these seven demons? These are the seven cardinal sins. Cardinal sins does not mean the sins committed by cardinal. That means capital sin, deadly sins. If we look into any manifestation, any problem, any struggle, that people are struggling with alcohol, people struggle with pornography, people struggle with anger, people struggle with some kind of manifestations. And they know, even people who are sick, and they cannot get out of this sickness, even they take medicine, and medicine cannot help them. So you are all attending this retreat with great hope, thinking if there is a deliverance prayer that is being made, you will be getting out of this particular sickness, this particular manifestation, this particular bad habit. But the Lord, the Lord is here to do something greater, something higher, and something more important for your life. Now, what did exactly God do to convert Mary Magdalene? Remember, she was a sinner woman, hated by others. Maybe she hated herself. Maybe she was in the pit of sin. Now, the Lord is coming and setting her free. How? By delivering her from seven demons. And who are these demons? I told you these are the seven cardinal sins. They are anger, pride, laziness, jealousy, lust, greed and gluttony and these seven demons sisters and brothers if we look into every capital sin the root of every capital sin is fear because devil is a deceiver it is fear for example what is uh, pride it's a fear of committing yourself fear of giving up yourself fear of giving up your independence what is greed fear of detachment what is laziness fear of commitment what is lust fear of becoming a child what is uh, jealousy this is fear of loving then what is anger fear of getting hurt that means every uh, sin every cardinal sin is rooted in fear if fear is the root cause of all these cardinal sins or the root causes of our bondage, then what is the, uh, how to overcome it? The fruit is love. If fear is the cause, love is what helps us to overcome these habits. That's why we read, this is 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18. You can repeat with me together, wherever you are, kindly repeat. There is no fear in love you can repeat with me there is no fear in love but perfect love cuts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love once again there is no fear in love but perfect love cuts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love that means the more is the love the more is the less is the fear the more is the power of god coming the more you will be delivered from all these bad habits that is destroying you that is blocking you to produce a fruit we have to know there are so many people they get angry and within no time they say i'm very sorry that means there is a spirit behind this anger that means this evil is not permitting them to get out of it. That means what I am saying, when we are asking for deliverance, actually we need deliverance from 
anger pride jealousy lust laziness greed and gluttony once you get deliverance from these seven spirits these are spirits these are not just ideas or some bad habits or small sins these are the spirits that is giving us these bondages that means if somebody says i don't want to get angry but i feel angry there are people who say i don't i hate alcohol i i don't like to drink alcohol but i am tempted to take this alcohol that means there is a root there is a spirit working behind that is why we need deliverance from all these spirits that is a true deliverance basically uh, we always say here there when i was in africa in kenya he, devil is like malaria now we can say he is like corona virus why what how it manifests and what is the root cause is so different for example if you get malaria sometimes malaria can be uh, seen with headache sometimes it's with fever sometimes it's with back pain sometimes it's with loose motion but it will never been uh, visible the same way now for example if somebody is affected by corona virus it can be manifested with a cough with a cold with a chest infection with some kind of a uh, fever but it's only when you check you will understand now these days if somebody gets cough then you will immediately think it this is corona but you cannot know it unless you get tested we know when it comes to satanic afflictions why people get confused because they don't know why this person is manifesting and here i am saying every sin the catholic church teaches is rooted in a capital sin and we should know we should never hate a sinner we hate sin we are praying for deliverance from a person from these bad habits we love the sinner and we hate sin but unfortunately we human beings we have a tendency to love sin and hate sinners jesus was just the opposite for example one day one boy he came for prayers and he was telling his problem is anger he gets angry for small things and he said i got this anger because of my mom i hate my mom that means his anger is rooted in hatred towards his mom because his mom was very angry upset mistreating him that's why he is telling he is so angry because mother is getting angry he is hating the mother then we told him you should not hate your mother you have to hate the sin of anger that means what is making your mother to get angry there's a spirit of anger you have to hate that habit of anger and you should not get angry like your mother now what is happening devil is a deceiver with this habit that's there in mother you are hating mother who is actually a victim of anger sisters and brothers as we are praying for this deliverance retreat we have to accept even me as i preach to you we need deliverance which is an ongoing process this deliverance is not just for a physical healing this is this, this should not be just for a kind of a breakthrough in our financial bondage or from some kind of getting out of some hereditary problems or some kind of childlessness or marriage blocks this can all be rooted in some kind of bondage but we have to know something beyond that means we need deliverance from these spirits which are these spirits cardinal sins and now i am going to help you with all these with first i will say what is this sin then i will tell you how to get out of it with a word that jesus made on the cross now for example if your problem is anger let us look i have already told you the spirit of anger when we look into the spirit of anger the root is fear of forgiving that means for every spirit the root of this spirit how this spirit is holding on to us fear fear of forgiving anger is rooted in fear of forgiving fear that if i forgive i will be hurt again if i forgive it's like a humiliation i will be again mistreated but we have to know how to get out of this anger the first thing we should meditate on the gift of the holy spirit this is the gift of piety that means love for 
abba father and with this love of the abba father we love our brothers and our sisters love for abba father means getting to know who is abba father and what is his character gift of piety helps us to know who is abba father now we know the character of abba father let's read this is luke chapter 6 verse 35 the character of abba father the almighty the all powerful abba father never got angry we read love your enemies do good and lend expecting nothing in return your reward will be great and you will be children of the most high for he is kind to the ungrateful and to the wicked read repeat with me he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked you can repeat after me he is kind to the ungrateful and, and, and the, the wicked. wicked who is the almighty father he has all the reason to get angry but he is kind why and kindness is more powerful than anger that means you should have this gift of piety to piety to abba father this is piety means definitely it is devotion and uh, imitation of abba father and his character and again we read in gospel of matthew chapter 5 verse 5 we read in the scripture that blessed are the meek they will inherit La- repeat with me blessed, blessed are the meek for they will, they will inherit, inherit the earth. earth where the world is talking if you are not getting angry if you are not bold people can dominate you maybe you are a wife you get angry why because you feel if you don't get angry your husband may dominate you he will always command he will just misuse you he will just take advantage of you but the scripture is telling just the opposite blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth more blessed are those who are meek those who never get angry that means you need to overcome the spirit of anger with a grace given from abba father then we have to meditate the word of jesus this is luke this is chapter 23 verse 34 how what is the approach of jesus he prayed together with me jesus said father, father forgive, forgive them, them for, for they, they do, do not, not know, know what, what they, they are, are doing, doing. and they, they cast, cast lots to divide his clothing. his clothing he prayed forgive them remember jesus is all powerful almighty he has all the reason to hold on to this anger this bitterness but he is just praying father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing that means if you are struggling with this habit of anger you sit before abba father and you will be so much touched by this kindness and the gentleness of abba father where he is kind to the wicked and he is kind even to the ungrateful and you see jesus being tortured by people according to saint brigit of sweden there was more than 5430 wounds in the body of jesus and still jesus is praying father forgive them for they don't know what they are doing and we need and we should know again every sin is a fallen virtue every sin is a fallen virtue that means the absence of meekness is anger that means you don't want to fight against this spirit of anger you need the gift of meekness to get out of anger that means you need to pray for the virtues of meekness gentleness and patience repeat after me the gifts the virtues you need meekness gentleness and patience repeat meekness gentleness and patience to overcome to overcome anger anger that means where there is light there is no darkness when you pray for deliverance do you need deliverance from anger is more important than deliverance from a kind of sickness sisters and brothers cancer can only kill your body but anger can cast you into hell this this is what jesus taught the apostles they were thinking that what's more important is physical healing but jesus knew what's more important is the salvation of their soul sin is more dangerous than sickness we were having a retreat in this is in maputo in mozambique and we asked them that's the time god gave us this message because there are so many who are affected by aids hiv positive we asked them uh, how many of you think that those who have aids will go to those who have aids those they will go to heaven or hell we asked them some answered they may go to heaven some said they may go to hell 
Uh, some said if they repent, they will go to heaven. Then we asked them, those who knowingly committed a sin and they got infected with AIDS, they will go to heaven or hell? Then they said, if they have knowingly committed uh, sin and they got infected, they will go to hell. Then we told them, these answers are not right because prodigal son knowingly committed sin, but father forgave him. For every sin, sisters and brothers, there is forgiveness if you repent. Even if you committed it knowingly or unknowingly, and we told them AIDS, it's a sickness. It's a sickness. It can only kill your body. If somebody have AIDS, that does not mean they will go to hell. This is only for their body. If they repent, God can heal them. God can forgive them. God can save them. Then we ask them, those who get angry, those who keep hatred, and those who hold on to it, what will happen? They will go to heaven or hell? Then they said that we don't know the answer. We told them, the scripture says, those who get angry, they will go to hell. They are liable to the fires of hell. That means hatred is more dangerous than AIDS. Anger is more dangerous than cancer. Maybe we always pity people who have sickness, but we have to be more pitiful to people who are angry, who are proud, who are lazy, who are lustful, who are greedy, who have into gluttony. Sisters and brothers, that's why this deliverance retreat, if you have ever thought that you need deliverance to have a financial breakthrough, you need deliverance to have a physical sickness, your good Lord is more serious. He's more generous, more concerned. He's looking at your spiritual, your eternal, your eternal welfare. That's why he wants you to get out of it. If you have the spirit of anger and if you really thirst for deliverance, the first thing, you need the gift of piety. The second thing, you need to cast it. That means your anger has come upon Jesus. That's why he had 5,430 wounds. That is the expression of your anger. The anger of your husband, your wife, your children, your subordinates, your co-workers. Every anger of every human person came upon Jesus. That's why John the ba Baptist pointed to Jesus and he exclaimed, John 1, 29, This behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Remember your sin has come upon Jesus. Your anger has deliverance in Jesus, in his body, in his crucifixion. Surrender it to Jesus. That's why the meditation of the word of Jesus on the cross is so much important to get deliverance from anger. And we should have a prayer. The prayer is you can pray after me. Abba Father, Abba, Father for you all things are possible. For you all things are Deliver possible. me from anger. Deliver me from anger. And fill me with meekness. And fill me with meekness. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness. Deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness. Daily fifty times. You have to pray if you need deliverance because this is an ongoing process. As long as you live until the last breath, these spirits are there all over and you need to overcome and you know there is no medicine to get out of anger. The medicine is the virtue of meekness. If Abba, the almighty Abba Father was meek, it is it's a grace, it's the strength to be meek, to be gentle, to be patient. Let no one misguide us. Those who are gentle are more powerful than those who are angry. Saint Francis D. Sale said, you can catch more flies with one drop of, one drop of honey than a big bottle of vinegar. You can catch more people with gentleness. You can convert more people with gentleness. You can influence your husband with a gentle smile than your angry face. He will run away. We try all these letters. We need deliverance, sisters and brothers, from these habits. Now, to overcome anger, what we need, the first thing we should know, what is anger? This is fear of forgiving. You should not be feared to forgive because Jesus forgave. Second thing, you need the virtues to overcome anger. The virtues are gentleness, meekness, and patience. And you need to meditate what Jesus prayed on the cross. Luke 23, 34. Father, 
forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and you need the gift of the holy spirit it's a free gift gift of counsel what is this gift of counsel take uh, the gift of piety what is this gift of piety love for abba father love for your neighbor and following what father has done and you need to pray the prayer abba father for you all things are possible for me nothing is possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness now let's go to pride and pride what is pride absence of humility pride is the fear of submitting your will to another submitting your your will to a human person or even to god is a fear of depending on someone fear of depending on god sisters and brothers jesus said this is john 15:5 you are i am the vine and you are the branches and you can do nothing apart from me please repeat after me i can do nothing i can do nothing apart from you my jesus apart from you my jesus i am a branch i am a branch you are the vine you are the vine abba father abba father for you all things are possible for you all things are possible deliver me from pride deliver me from pride and fill me with the humility and fill me with humility abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from pride deliver me from pride and fill me with humility and fill me with humility and we need the gift of counsel gift of counsel from the holy spirit to overcome pride what is this gift of counsel counsel to get counseling to get direct advice from abba father from the lord from the holy spirit because 1 peter 5 5 we read what is the great advantage of humility sisters and brothers we know with our own power we can only commit sin in the same way we read together in the same way you who oh, are yeah. younger must, must accept, accept the authority, authority of, of the, the elders, elders and all of you, you must clothe, clothe yourselves we continue with, with humility, humility in your in dealings, dealings with, with one, one another, another. For, god for god opposes the, the proud but, but gives grace, grace to, to the, the humble. humble gives grace to the humble see why this ordinary woman a girl and young girl called mary became the mother of god because she was lowly she was humble humility attracts god's grace if grace is everything saint therese of child jesus teaches everything is grace everything is grace if i am standing in front of you if i am preaching the word of god if you are listening the word of god if you have taken fasting it's all grace and how you will get grace through humility that means those who are proud can never grow in holiness can never get the gift of uh, grace from the lord that means to overcome the spirit of pride we need the gift of counsel and we need to meditate what jesus said on the cross mark 15:34 why cross cross is the answer of deliverance is cross who brought brought deliverance and freedom mark 15:34 jesus said he was totally dependent on our father see jesus was when he was just 12 years he was teaching pharisees sadducees and high priests he had all the freedom to be independent to be alone and to dictate his own things he was a miracle worker he was a way maker he was a promise keeper he was god he was word made flesh he was the alpha the omega the prince of peace but he decided to submit himself to abba father and he prayed my god my god why have you forsaken me please repeat with me my oh god, god my god, god why, why have you forsaken me? me he is sisters and brothers he is giving himself unto the father that he his greatest pain the spiritual father say the greatest pain of jesus was the separation to abba father but sin when our sins came upon jesus he was to be separated from abba father that means he really carried our sin that is why he felt this pain of separation this was his greatest pain that he was feeling forsaken but he held on to abba father and we need the the gifts i told you the gift of humility the virtues virtues of humility virtue of obedience and virtue of gratitude if you need to overcome the spirit of pride if you need deliverance from pride you need gift of gratitude that if you, wherever you are whatever you are is god who brought you 
David is known as a king after the heart of Jesus. Why? He made a beautiful prayer. This is 1 Chronicles chapter 17 verse 16. 1 Chronicles 17 16. The prayer of King David. He prayed in this way. You can repeat with me. Who am I, O Lord God? Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house? And what is my house? That you have brought me thus far. That you have brought me thus far. Who am I, O Lord God? Who am I, O And Lord what God? is my house? And what is my That house? you have brought me thus far. That you have brought me thus far. If you say that your children are pure gift from God, it's not your quality, that your efficiency, that you have children. When you acknowledge, Lord, it's your mercy that brought me this far. It's your mercy that gave me a house, gave me children children gave me job gave me money when you have this spirit of gratitude you are getting deliverance from the spirit of pride and you need even the spirit of obedience actually disobedience is a sign of pride why many marriages are broken why there is divorce why there is separation where there is pride a husband cannot submit to the wife where there is pride a wife cannot submit to the husband do you feel irritated when your husband talks something especially when he is jobless that means there is a spirit of pride attacking you you need deliverance more than your husband maybe you are thinking your husband is an alcoholic he need deliverance maybe the wife you are crying and praying lord even in this retreat help my husband to stop alcohol and the lord is telling my daughter you need more deliverance because you are under the spell of pride. You need more deliverance than your husband who is an alcoholic. It, it can kill his body. But remember, this pride is more serious than cancer. It is killing and eating up your soul. Like corona is eating our lungs, this pride is eating our soul. That means we need deliverance from pride more than even other habits pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are deliver possible. me from pride deliver me from and fill pride. me with your humility and fill me with your humility and now the spirit of lust we need deliverance from the spirit of lust and, and, and what is lust actually it's a fear of being a child fear of being as pure as a child fear of depending on a mother a child needs a mother sisters and brothers in order to overcome the spirit of lust we need mother mary that's why the spiritual fathers put forward the prayer of jesus on the cross this is john 19:27 as a remedy to overcome the spirit of lust for deliverance from lust we need true devotion to blessed virgin mary so jesus when he was on the cross he said he said to the disciple repeat with me here is your mother here is your mother when juan diego when Mother Mary appeared to Juan Diego in Guadalupe, this is what Mother Mary told him. Am I not here? You are mother. Why are you afraid? Why are you sad? Why are you distressed? Am I not here? You are mother, sisters and brothers. Anyone who has a true devotion to Blessed Virgin Mary, they will overcome the spirit of lust. There are many who are struggling to overcome the spirit of lust because they have impure curiosity. They cannot control their eyes the ears now this is an era of social media every kind of impurity is on your fingertips and people are so much being tempted and people cause sin to others and anyone who pray the rosary have a devotion have taken mary as their mother will overcome this spirit because mother mary is the mother most pure mother most chaste mother undefiled the most virgin the most holy virgin the most chaste and mother mary will will put insert inside you the spirit of purity, sanctity and holiness. And you cannot get deliverance from the spirit of lust, from any kind of medicine available in this world. You need devotion to Mother Mary. This is what Jesus have proved and gave us this gift of mother. And it's at the foot of the cross where the mother can see her son suffering and going through the pain. And she is giving us this grace. And also we need, in order to overcome the spirit of lust, we need the virtues of chastity, modesty, and, tem and temperance. You can pray after me, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. 
Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from lust. Deliver me from lust. And fill me with chastity. And fill me with chastity. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things Deliver are possible. Deliver me from lust and fill me with your purity. Deliver me from lust and fill me with your purity. And the gift of the Holy Spirit you need to overcome the spirit of lust is the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. When you fear the Lord, you will hate sin. You will hate impure things. And it's a gift that will help you never to make the Lord hurt. But the fear of the Lord is a gift that helps you never to offend God. You fear the Lord and you avoid evil ways. Psalm 119 verse 101. Why David was being considered as a king after the heart of the Lord? Because he hated every sinful way. I hold back, repeat with me together. I, I hold, hold back my, my feet, feet from, from every, every evil way, way. In, in order, order to, to keep, keep your word. word. I hold back my feet from every evil way. He decided not to walk in an evil way. Again, 128, verse 128, same chapter. We read, truly, I, I direct my, my steps, steps by, by all, all your precepts. precepts. I, hate I hate every, every false, false way. way. Sisters and brothers, we need deliverance from the spirit of lust. Many are tormented by this spirit. And this is what the deliverance you really need. This is what the Lord helped Mary Magdalene to come out. And the Lord helped her and gave her this gift of the fear of the Lord. To overcome the spirit of lust, you need the gift of the fear of the Lord. You need the virtues of chastity temperance and modesty and you need to have Mary as your mother take mother Mary as your mother this is the gift the Lord gave as he was dying on the cross which is very very important to overcome this spirit of lust and we need to pray to Abba Father Abba Father for you all things are possible deliver me from lust and fill me with chastity now in order to overcome the spirit of laziness and laziness is Fear of commitment. I told you every sin, every kind of this spirit is rooted in fear because devil puts inside you fear. Thereby you will be become paralyzed. You will fall a prey to that. And in order to overcome the spirit of means the root of the spirit of laziness is the fear of commitment. This is commitment to God. Fear of commitment to prayer. Fear of commitment to anyone even anything, even to your job, even to your husband, even to your wife, even to your duties, even for spiritual things. There are people how this laziness is so dangerous that there are people who say, they say, you know, I sometimes I get angry. I'm like this. Why, why can't you tolerate me? I tolerate you. Uh, this is my character. I spend some time for gambling. I watch some time TV. I watch some time movies, sisters and brothers. This is called a spiritual laziness. And it is a dangerous thing that if anybody is contented with the way you are, and if you are getting angry, you say, it is my nature. If you have any habit of even smoking, taking alcohol, you say, no, I, this is my habit. You need deliverance. You need deliverance. And this is deliverance from laziness. And especially fear of commitment. And in order to overcome, we need the gift of knowledge gift of the holy spirit this is gift of knowledge that seeing the things through the eyes of god understanding what the lord exactly wants from you from your life because god has prepared a plan for your life a plan for your welfare and you need to meditate john 19 30 the word of jesus on the cross john chapter 19 verse 30 jesus said it is finished jesus never took rest he is always doing the will of the father he was always ful fulfilling father's will repeat with me when, when jesus, jesus had received the wine he said, he said it, it is finished, finished. Then he, then he bowed his, his head, head and, and gave, gave up his spirit. spirit you need to meditate the way the word from the cross where jesus he is telling it is finished he has accomplished what father established, what father has uh, appointed him to do. He was never taking rest. He was never lazy. He himself said, John 4.34, John 4.34, Jesus himself said, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Sisters and brothers, we need to overcome this spirit of laziness. 
And in order to overcome the spirit of laziness, first we need the gift of knowledge and we need to meditate the word of the cross that is Jesus said it is finished. Then we need the virtues that is the virtue of love, virtue of obedience and virtue of diligence. Which are the virtues? Love, obedience and diligence. diligence. Repeat, love, yeah. obedience yes. and diligence. diligence. Where there is love, you don't feel lazy. Where there is obedience, you don't feel lazy. Where there is diligence, you are always active and alert. Pray after me this beautiful prayer. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence. Deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence. Once again, Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence. Deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence. Then the spirit of jealousy. Spirit of jealousy. The root of the spirit of jealousy is the fear of being powerless. Fear of giving up control. Fear of getting out of the driver's seat. Fear of giving your control to others. It's rooted in fear. In order to overcome the spirit of jealousy, we need the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the gift of wisdom. Sisters and brothers, sometimes in the family you find some kind of commotion. You don't, you feel this house, it is haunted. There's some kind of misunderstanding. The husband, the wife, they never uh, love each other, understand each other, some kind of problem. And you will always find Satan is attacking them, some kind of problem. But we have to read, this is in the book of James chapter 3 from 16 we read. James chapter 3 from 16 we read. It's very important. Were... Together with me, for where, where there, there is, is envy, envy and, and selfish, selfish ambition, ambition there, there will also, also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. kind. Now, if a husband is jealous of the wife, there will be all kinds of problem and we will immediately say, this house is haunted. But this house is haunted with a spirit of jealousy, not with anything else. This is what we always forget and we don't treat the root. We are going to the root causes of that satanic afflictions where there is envy and selfish ambition. There will also be disorder. You find disorder. You go to a company, you go to your office, you go in, maybe you are in the church, in the parish, and you find some kind of commotion. There's nothing is working. And people may say, people have done this, people have done that one, but there is, a, a, there is another spirit hiding behind. This spirit is called spirit of jealousy. And in order to overcome this spirit of jealousy, we need the gift of the Holy Spirit called gift of wisdom. What is this wisdom? To know what is pleasing to God. To know what, how does God looks into a person. That means we are different. We, no human being is in competition with others. No human being is called to compare, but they are complementary. No one is a threat to the other. For we, every human person is inevitable. That's why there is no two human beings, even though they are twins, they are not the same. Their eye, their uh, everything is different. Their eyes are different. Their thumb impressions are different. That means we are different. We are not a threat. And you will get this when you receive the gift of wisdom from the Holy Spirit. And you need the virtues to overcome the spirit of uh, jealousy, the virtue of love. Where there is love, there is no jealousy. You need the gift of humility, you need the gift of obedience. Where there is humility, there is no jealousy, no comparison, no competition. You need the gift of love, pure love, cuts out every kind of jealousy. And we need to pray. Pray after me. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your wisdom. Deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your Abba wisdom. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Abba Father, for you all things are possible. Deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your love. Deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your love. Then the spirit of gluttony. The root of the spirit of gluttony is the fear of mortification. That you are afraid even to, uh, you are afraid of the cross, you are afraid of the suffering, you are afraid of decreasing, you are afraid of putting your false self away. This is the root of the spirit of gluttony. And 
in order to overcome the spirit of gluttony we need the gift of fortitude from the holy spirit fortitude is to persevere is to fight against the desires of our flesh of the things of this world the 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 things that satisfy our flesh and we need to overcome it and we need to meditate john 19:28 the word of jesus on the cross he said i thirst let's repeat after this when jesus, jesus knew, knew that, that all was now finished, finished he said, he said in order to fulfill, fulfill the scripture, the scripture I, I am thirsty. thirsty saint mother teresa of calcutta wrote in all her convents beside the cross i thirst and she has really said jesus was thirsting not for water not for wine not for food but for souls for our love for our conversion he is still thirsting do we just think that he is thirsting for material things he is thirsting for you for me he is thirsting for our love he is thirsting for our conversion he is thirsting for our salvation sisters and brothers and when we come to know then we will not take rest we will not feel glutton of the things to fill our material satisfaction we will always look for the things that will cleanse our soul that will be helpful for the salvation of not just our souls but the souls of others the same way jesus was living pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from gluttony and fill me with self control deliver me from gluttony and fill me with self control so what is gluttony absence of self control and we also need the virtues virtues from the lord virtue of temperance and virtue of prudence virtue of temperance virtue of prudence and virtue of self control in order to overcome the spirit of gluttony one self control that gift that virtue is coming to you you will be able to cast out the demon of gluttony from your heart why you need deliverance from it there are people i know one uh, girl she was been she has knee pain and the root cause of her knee pain was they said that even she was treated nothing was taking place the the root cause is overweight why overweight overeating why overeating gluttony so the the spirit is rooted in gluttony so somebody who has knee pain even if you treat knee pain even if you swallow medicine after medicine unless you overcome the spirit of gluttony again this person will have knee problem that means maybe you as you are attending this deliverance retreat you may be completely in a different world thinking how can i get out of this particular sickness where i tried all kinds of medicine and i am not getting healed and somebody told you you need, you need deliverance and you are thinking of deliverance from this sickness but you should know this sickness is rooted in a sin called a cardinal sin such as that of maybe gluttony maybe greed now we go to the sin of greed what is this greed greed is rooted in the fear of detachment fear of giving all fear of letting go fear of total dependence on god god fear to give yourself totally to god that means you have the sin of greed you have to depend you rely on money you rely on wealth you rely on your possessions that's why 1 timothy 6 9 and 10 we read what is the root causes of every evil love of money is the root of all evil repeat with me 1 timothy 6 9 1 timothy chapter 6 verse 9 but those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction verse 10 because for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil why you may find that some kind of problem with the relatives fighting and you find maybe you need a priest who has the power of exorcism because there is something that is going on but what is the cause greed for money greed for money is the root of all kinds of evil sisters and brothers is because of this greed that people can kill one another this is so deadly these sins are why this is called deadly cain killed abel because of the spirit of jealousy I Esau lost his birthright because of the spirit of gluttony. Sisters and brothers, if you look into 
we may just think externally oh this is the problem like when i get some fever when i was in tanzania i got fever and i just went into our infirmary i want to swallow a paracetamol then my brother priest said no father wait you go and check for your malaria because if you take paracetamol and when you check malaria will still hide then it will be more dangerous sisters and brothers when i went to check i got malaria then only i understood paracetamol cannot help in treating malaria we need medicine for malaria sisters and brothers this is what is when you find some kind of commotion disorder or some kind of fighting you have to know it these are all rooted in these sins then how to overcome the spirit of greed we need the gift of understanding from the holy spirit understanding is the gift where you re really understand what who is god what is his plan jeremiah 29 and 11 we read for i know the plans i have for you a plan for your welfare not for your destruction when you know that god has a plan he is a provider he will not make you a beggar he will not make you poor he is a provider you don't want to work too hard just to make money to be rich it's god who makes someone rich and he is caring for you and he makes people rich he gives you whatever you need before you were born this earth was here the the tree he has created not only trees even the fruits on it is not you created it god created it for you for your welfare if the lord has provided for everything he'll also provide for you give yourself to the lord again we need the word of jesus that he prayed this is luke 23:46 jesus prayed father i commend myself into your hands repeat with me then jesus crying with a loud Lord voice said, said father, father into, into your hands, hands i command my, my spirit. spirit father into, into your hands, hands i command my, my spirit. spirit having said this he breathed his last sisters and brothers jesus on the cross he is praying father i rely totally on you sisters and brothers do you have can you rely totally on god do, are you free to give yourself totally into the lord do you have that faith and in order to overcome we need these virtues of first faith you need to have faith one in god who provides who protects who is there for you and you also need the virtue of generosity that the more you give the more you get you will never lack anything if you are a giver jesus was a giver look at the cross he gave himself totally he gave everything sisters and brothers let's pray pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from greed deliver me from greed and fill me with your generosity and fill me with your generosity abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from greed deliver me from greed and fill me with your faith and fill me with your faith sisters and brothers there are many who are attending this deliverance retreat because you are childless and you need a child then you feel maybe there is a block there's a hidden trap and you need deliverance maybe there are some in the family tree who are also childless and now, now you feel you inherited that same problem if you have a deliverance that you receive you may get a child remember the lord wants you even before you get a child be generous help other children help children who are not born from your womb and you'll be blessed have you that faith do you have that faith to serve god the lord told abraham and abraham's faith is revealed in romans 4 from 18 how generous was abraham and how generous was god how did god bless him we repeat it this will go until 22 hoping against hope he believed he that, that he would, he become, would become the father, the father of, of many, many nations, nations according, according to what, to what was said, said. So, so numerous shall, shall your descendants, descendants be, be. He did, he did not, not weaken, weaken in faith, faith when, when he, he considered, considered his own body, body which, which was, was already good as, as dead, death, for he was, death, of, he was a hundred death, years death, old. Death, for when death, he considered death, the barrenness death, of Sarah's death, womb, no distress made, made him waver concerning the promise of God. Of God. But, but he, he grew, grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully, fully convinced, convinced that god, god was, was able, able to do, do what, what he had, had promised. promised 
therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness sisters and brothers be generous and you will be able to overcome the spirit of greed please pray after me abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from greed deliver me from greed and fill me with your generosity and fill me with your generosity abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from gluttony deliver me from gluttony and fill me with your self control and fill me with your self control abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from last deliver me from last and fill me with your chastity and fill me with your chastity abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from laziness deliver me from laziness and fill me with your diligence and fill me with your diligence abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from anger deliver me from anger and fill me with your meekness and fill me with your meekness abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from pride deliver me from pride and fill me with your humility and fill me with your humility abba father for you all things are possible abba father for you all things are possible deliver me from jealousy deliver me from jealousy and fill me with your love